All right, welcome to the Witcher Math Channel. Kind of going on the fly here. Just want to get some practice in on this uh, eighth grade standard for solving uh, single variable equations when you have a fraction or a decimal as a coefficient. The coefficient is that, right? The part next to the x, the numerical part of a term. Anyway, we're going to go quick here. And here's my disclaimer. This is my method, right? I'm solving in my own way. Solve it in your own way, OK? There's lots of different ways to solve these problems. The purpose of this video is just to help with some review for a test. So I'm going to show you the uh, quick and easy way I like to do it. It may be different than what you do. As long as we get the same answer, you should keep doing what you're doing, OK? If you're getting things wrong, maybe you should uh, adopt my method or rethink your own. Here we go. What we've learned with the uh, simple ones like this is the old uh, use the reciprocal of the coefficient method, right? The reciprocal is a uh, number which, when multiplied by another number, equals 1. So the result is this turns into a big old 1. And on this side, we have uh, 18 times 4 over 3, which is, oh, that's 72 over 3. That's 3 days, right? 24. Okay, let's do this one. Now, the only thing different about this is we have a negative sign. When we use the flip and multiply or the reciprocal multiplication method, flip it and include the sign, okay? Because we want to get rid of that sign, too. So multiply both sides by that reciprocal of the coefficient, including the sign. So in this case, I have x equals, I'm going to do a little calculator action here to keep the pace going, 18 times negative 7, whoopsie, times negative 7 is a negative 126 over 2. Therefore, x equals negative 63 on that one. Hey, 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 hey. Should we do another one? Oh, okay. What color? Which color? What do you think? No? Not feeling red? Okay, let's do green. Here we go. Same deal. Hey, we have a fraction over here. Honey badger don't care. We're going to go ahead and do this one, right? Once you have a method that you can trust, and you get the trust by getting correct answers and positive reinforcement, you're just going to uh, keep on going. We got negative 5 times 3. Oh, wait, wait. Look, here's an opportunity to simplify ahead of time. 5 over 5 makes 1. 3 over 12 makes 1 fourth. Wow x equals negative one-fourth. Simplify first. Then you don't have to deal with big, confusing numbers later. I kind of like the green. I'm going to stick with it here. Uh, one method we've learned for dealing with decimals is, uh, well, you can not deal with them at all and just solve this problem. But something we learned is if you multiply all terms, by the greatest decimal place value, in this case hundredths, so I'm going to multiply by 100, it gets rid of all the decimals. It moves it over, in this case, two spots for each one. So I'm going to end up with 55x minus 140 equals 300. Okay, All my decimals are gone now, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, solve this with some nice, big, easy numbers. 55x equals 440. <laughs> it looks like I planned to leave this extra room over here, but it's pure luck. Just lucky. But I did plan for that answer to be 8, so that was not lucky. There we go. Okay, so one technique you can use when dealing exclusively with decimals is multiply by the whole number that has the same number of zeros in it as the greatest number of decimal places in your equation. Try saying that 10 times really quickly. Here we go with the next one. 
This one, uh, people tend to not like these quite as much because it has decimals and fractions. Yeah. So you got to make a decision. What I'm going to decide here is I'm going to use all decimals. Okay. You got to decide what do you want it to look like. Do you like decimals better? If a calculator is allowed on your test, maybe you like decimals better. Maybe you like fractions. I don't know. But I'm going to use decimals. Because I know that 3 fourths is like 75 cents. 3 quarters, right? Okay. Now I'm going to uh, take away 275 from both sides. Did I do something wrong here? Let me look at this. Two and three quarters. I'm feeling pretty good about that. I'm feeling pretty good about that. Now, since the sign is negative on both sides, we can multiply everything by negative one, right? Which makes the signs positive on both sides. Okay, now I'm just gonna divide by that. And I'm going to have to use a calculator. It's okay. It's okay. Unless you know what two and a half divided by one and seven tenths is off the top of your head. I got one and 47 hundredths and some extra stuff. Okay. Send me a comment if that's wrong. I have a weird feeling about that one, but unless somebody checks me, I'm going to get away with it. Okay, two to go. Big ugly one here, big ugly. Oh, I'm going to change this all to decimals again. Hope that's okay. Change to all decimals. Just because I know my eighths. I know that one eighth equals that. So, three eighths equals that. That's just something I know. I'm lucky or cursed. I don't know what the deal is, but I do know that is true, so I'm going to use it. Okay, now I'm going to use the strategy from up above. The greatest number of decimal places I see here is three. So I'm going to multiply by 1,000 because there's three decimal places there, which will counterbalance or get rid of that. Okay, so move the decimal three spots everywhere. The decimal got moved, right? One, two, three spots. Three spots there, and one, two, three spots there. And that's an X. Thanks for catching that. I appreciate it. Ah, now I'm going to add 7,800x to both sides. You're thinking, wow, this is ridiculous, right? Well, yeah, it is. But you know what? Not all problems are nice and simple, are they? Okay. Now it looks like I want to add 23,200 to both sides. I'm going to have to take this work over here. I just plumb ran out of room. So I have 560 plus 23200 is 23,760 equals 8175x. Divide both sides. By 81.75. Let's see what happens. Ah, x equals that. Did you get that? I don't know about this, but uh, I'm going to go with it. And finally, our last one here. Let's switch colors and wrap it up in black. Okay. 
Uh, I'm going to multiply by 1,000. That's going to move the decimal three spots. So I'm going to go, there's one spot, two spots, three spots. There's one, two, three spots for the decimal, right? One, two, three, put the zero there. And one, two, three, it's going to give me three X. That's an X. Thanks again for catching that. When I go fast like this, sometimes I make mistakes. Raise your hand if that has ever happened to you. Yeah, I'm guilty. I am guilty. Uh-oh, I don't have anything left on that side. I better add this to both sides. I'm almost out of paper, which means we're almost out of time. But I like showing my work. Okay, I'm going to divide both sides by this number. Here's my high-tech calculator. Super high tech. One, zero, two, five, nine, one, zero, divided by three, four, one, nine, seven. Look at that. Ah, there we go. Well, I hope that worked out for you. Thanks for watching. This was just a bunch of uh, practice problems we slammed through here, and I hope that helps you deal with fraction and decimal coefficients. Do, do, do. Bye for now. And uh, I'm going to get back to eating some lunch here. What do we have today? Bag of meat. Bag of meat, just like any other day. Hey, take care and thanks for watching the Witcher Math Channel. Bye now.